So what I wanted to talk about, Rob Rudnick and I were talking this morning, and this idea has been in my mind of a pressure relief valve mechanism. And in my work in the oil field, I work around <sighs> tanks a lot. And <clears throat> when the, you know, you don't want the tanker to explode, no matter what you're hauling, if it's hot, if it's water or whatever fluid you're hauling, you don't want that to reach critical mass so that you could have an explosion or a dangerous, dangerous scenario. So in many parts of the industry, including the oil field, you have on any sealed container a pressure relief valve mechanism. And I think the pro-life movement is, much of it is, and has pressure relief valve mechanisms and serves um, the mainstream pro-life movement and even parts of the pro-life movement that are considered to be uh, radical uh, serve effectively as pressure relief valves. In other words, things that are designed, because the pressure in that tank, if it reaches a certain threshold, this valve will open up and release enough pressure to bring things back down so it doesn't boil over or create a dangerous scenario. And that's what I've witnessed over decades in the pro-life movement. Rob and I were talking about this. In the pro-life movement is that many of these groups, and I witnessed it personally, I don't judge these people as individuals. God is everyone's judge. And many people have different motivations. And my prerequisite, for, I mean, my preface to saying this is that I, I know that most of the people involved in these organizations are not thinking this way at all. But that doesn't change the facts, if the facts are facts, okay? And I worked with survivors of the abortion holocaust for several years. And I was involved in something called Operation Brer Rabbit. Jeff White called it Operation Brer Rabbit. It was never written on paper that I was aware of. But it was Operation Bear Rabbit. We would go around, deliberately um, do things to provoke the police to arrest us on university campuses, mostly in California. For instance, like what? Like, 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 go with the graphic images, you know. And, and we we sincerely wanted to show the graphic images, so it's not like we were lying or we were being disingenuous. But we would we would uh, disobey them when they told us to move the images. So I, Obeying you know, God rather than men is what the, the, no, so it, was, it was the right thing to do. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It was the right thing to do. But the plan behind it, which I also supported and was in collusion with, was the, was the, was the plan to, to feed the money from those lawsuits because California is unique among all the states in that they have the Bain Act coming from, I believe it's called the Bain Act, coming from the 19, growing organically out of that 1960s war movement protest when so many students across the country were arrested for protesting the Vietnam War. The leftists, for the most part, I'm sure libertarians jumped in with them, but the leftists put in an act in California that set a minimum, I don't know what it is, $35,000, $40,000 judgment. $5,000 fine for each protester whose rights you violate. I think it was more. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's what, what they told me. Yeah, that's what they told me. 40000 but you may be right. No. And if you get two or three arrests, that... that well, you get you get... You know, I mean, there could have been hundreds. Right, see. right, right. Calm and what the, what the idea was is that the the, uh, the cops have to pay that out of their malpractice insurance, yeah. and then everybody's rates go up on the whole force. Right. So right. it really does ding the whole force. But it's, it's a great thing. I it is. It, it, it is. State of the Union, the First Amendment yeah. should do that, you know, yeah. but, but they specified. So it's a good thing, but it, it was driven by leftists, libertarians jumping in. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, minimal... Uh, people from the other side of the aisle and they were so they were incensed that, that we were acting it was genius jeff white's brilliant uh, he's a brilliant genius love love him to death right uh, but it was designed to use what they had created the mechanism they'd created to protect their leftist war protesters and by the way i'm personally against the vietnam war you mm -hmm. know and the subsequent wars i wasn't even born then mm -hmm. but so what i'm getting at is that is that they never imagined that people, most of them never imagined that people would come from the Christian right, so-called Christian right ideological side of the spectrum and use the Bain Act to to fund themselves. And part of that, I'll tell you, yeah. part of that is, is that people... Let me turn it on you. Yeah. It on you. Yeah. It's okay, we can be a little yeah. sloppy. Part of, that, part of that is because really, when I was around for it, I'm old enough to remember that the Christian right is basically the red-headed bastard child of the new left. Right. In terms of people. Yeah, you know those people came out of the the, the civil rights and the anti-war movement and went into to resisting abortion. That's right. Most started out being mostly Catholic youth that were that were like you know against the war and and and, and against uh, uh you know stuff like that. And then they started to segue into into resisting abortion. That's right. And that's, that's right. that was the beginning of the of the uh, uh of the religious right. There 
But those that because everybody was a leftist back in those days. Right, right. So it was right. inevitable, you know, but and people don't like to talk about it, but that's the case. And the new left bears almost zero resemblance to the old left because they yeah. were they were in favor of civil rights. And yeah, now they're they crushing know. civil they rights. They would walk around right. with the with the uh, don't tread on me flags. Yeah. So you can me, see it in old pictures of the of the of the anti war uh demonstrations in DC. People walking around with don't tread on me flags. On the old the old yeah. left. Yeah, the okay. old well it's no that really was the that new was, left. That was the new left. That was okay. the new left. The old left is like Alinsky, who's like a generation oh, okay. ahead of them. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, let's flip it. Careful. Flip. There you go. All right. All right. So anyway, to bring this to a conclusion, not to, not to drag on too much, I have some grievances. So I'm not coming out as an accuser of Jeff White or survivors right now. I'm just bringing my witness, and I want to give Jeff, survivors, other organizations that that, that I have witnessed. Uh, in the, but those are the ones I'm going to name because I have a firsthand witness there. As an example, as an example of this pressure relief valve mechanism. And what makes me conclude that? But I, I'm, I'm withhold, actually, I'm withholding judgment, withholding conclusion. Let me just voice my long, long held suspicions so that they can be knocked down. I'd love them to be knocked down if they're not true, which is that groups like survivors and even geniuses like Jeff have uh, long ago degenerated into little other than a pressure relief valve mechanism. Because, and here's my witness that I have to that. Because the thing was was genius uh, to you know to use the Bain Act on the Enterprise, right? Some might say that that could amount. It's to actually standard like procedure. Well, they gripe about it, but it's standard procedure yeah. worldwide to right. do stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But, you, know. you know, you could say that's racketeering. I don't think they have a a case for it. But what I'm getting at, because we were sincere, we were sincere, and they, we really didn't really want to go to jail, you know, but we just took advantage of the fact that we knew we were going to go to jail sometimes yeah. anyway. Why should we not, uh, you know, be paid <laughs> for the violation of our civil rights? Okay, now, wait a minute. Yeah. How about this? When the lambs would go to jail, yeah. that was part of what uh, would help them stay on the road because yeah. they weren't having any expenses in jail. That's correct. They weren't you know, having so, so is that just a, is that just an incremental difference? It is, it is, but you know, Jeff <clears throat> never put it on paper, but he called it Operation Bear Rabbit. In other words, woo, officer, don't throw me in jail. <laughs> woo! And then you get thrown in jail, like, woo, I got the bane out, that was born a race. You know? Yeah, right. Like, so yeah, that's right. Uh, whole, that's the sure. imagery for those who are not Uncle Remus aficionados. Yeah, right. So what I'm getting at is, I, I was all for that 100% with sure. it until, the, until I started becoming what was too effective for survivors. Like, well, tell, tell us well, about that. Specifically for, maybe not for Jeff and the people I was with, they were cool with it, but the donors, the donor base, Christian donor base, and really that's who I'm pointing. Not Jeff, not survivors, but I'm just using them as an example to point at the problem that I saw, which is the donor base of the pro-life movement so compromised that what they did was, for example, I was at ACOG in Philadelphia. Explain ACOG. ACOG is the American Coalition of obstetrician and gynecologist. And the about one-third of them are abortionists. Right. And the biggest OBGYN organization in the United States and the most, formerly the most reputable, I have no reputation for me anymore, no. but they, but they, having abandoned the Hippocratic Oath utterly and repudiating it, no. actually, to me, I think they're a covenant of witches. But what I'm getting at is that, that my crime, and I didn't get arrested for it, but my crime, not with the police, but with the pro-life movement, was taking cameras, sometimes giving away my Tactics, but sometimes the cameras didn't even have film in. Okay, taking in the early two thousands, taking <clears> cameras, <throat> pointing them at the people, the OBGYNs going into ACOG and sm saying, "Smile, you're on." Uh, at that time, we had a website, abortioncams.com. Smile, you're on the internet, and we are compiling dossiers for the day when you will be prosecuted or arraigned crimes for against crime, crimes against humanity, humanity Nuremberg style. Yeah, uh -huh. and they shit themselves. Uh -huh. They uh -huh. just. Their pants. No. They were so scared, but we didn't get arrested. All I was doing was smile, holding a camera up in their no. face, and, and creating that picture, however fantastic. And who blinks mean, the donor base? 100% sincere yeah. that we would like to uh, arraign them and try them for crimes against humanity, namely the genocide of millions of yeah. newborn babies. And who blinks now, the donor base? Yeah. Nobody got arrested for this. Incredibly effective. ACOG held a press conference, how scary we were, yeah. how much we were messing with their program. It created a very effective deterrent, and we didn't even get one arrest. Then I get back to California. Jeff White, survivors, pulls me in. They said, Jonathan, you went too far. 
Ah, uh, yeah, you went too far. <laughs> and the donors read the article in the, in the Philadelphia uh, newspapers. Ah, uh. and uh, and and they're scared. And you've got to stop no. talking about crimes against humanity. You've got to stop threatening them with, you know. And it wasn't a threat. It's it the fact they, they had Nuremberg trials right. going on in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah so right. Yeah. No, no, no threat to violence yeah. except through due process. Yeah, through due process. So literally, they said, "You guys shut up." Yeah. And because the pressure relief mechanism at that point had done its work and you're not supposed to go any further because yeah. you might fuck up and bring things to resolution. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So well, that, that's that out there. Well, yeah, that's right. I've been sitting on it for a decade. Yeah, I'm tired and of it. I can't it. hold it no more. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Okay. What do you got? Well, you know, it, 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 there's all throughout history, there, there's been these, these things where, you uh, like the, the the Russians, they they would get uh, when the, when they were communists. Still, yeah. they would get uh, intel groups, you know, in in with their opposition or even with their own people. Yes, and they would get them to finance it, like to get the government that they were targeting to finance it. Yeah, thinking it was their intel group. Right. You know, so it's quite rat. That's all throughout history. That can all be looked up. So uh, it's it's very feasible. That that's exactly so. It's certainly not without precedent. Yeah, no, no not without precedent. Yeah. So, so now it's for them it's to rational to, to to shoot me down on. This. Yeah, and let's see how they do it. Let's, yeah. let's see if they do it the way the left does it. You know, oh, so, you know, Jonathan's this bad guy, yeah. or if they present rational evidence, this is not the case. And um, uh, what we really need, what I'm, I'm looking for, is what we really need is a whole new paradigm. And maybe to have the her- paradigm, we have to have a whole new set of circumstances. Things have continued to percolate for the worse of this country because I'm convinced because of all the supernatural blood guilt curses on the land from all this abortion. Now we've got 800,000 kids a year disappearing into the uh, sex trafficking right. uh, pipeline. Right. In this country alone, 800,000 a year. And people are able to talk about all this pedophilia going on by elites way up high in society, in business, in government, in the church. It's just like... Uh, it's like what St. Paul said, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Now that they can talk about. And so we're just sitting here analyzing. Now how come everybody can talk about that, but you can't talk about it? Right, right, you know? right, right. And so, so what's what's with that? Well, uh, so we, all you can really do, because people are so complex, you know, we can we can come up with theories as to why that is. Yeah. It's because so many people have been in active and passive collusion with abortion that they, you know, that they're playing the comparison game with right. sin as people are wanting right. to do. Right. Okay, well, maybe so. Uh, is it because it wasn't a threat to them if somebody else's baby was getting tortured to death? But if it looks Good like, question. yeah, if their child, maybe it's both, maybe it's something else, maybe it's one or the other. But there are there are things that were. However, that also means that we're reaching a flashpoint in the whole society. Now we're all threatened. It's, it couldn't possibly be more pervasive. Right. It's everywhere. We're drowning in an ocean of blood guilt curses right. in this country. It looks like we could actually maybe fall. There's, you know, this next election is our biggest election in history. Still, nobody is talking about all the blood guilt curses on the land. Hmm. And uh, even though our demographics are, are a matter of national uh, security at this point, our median age is 38 years old. We're in the trucking industry. People are not showing up to drive trucks, man. Yeah. You know, and we would be a we would be a red flag industry sector because. We, we need a lot of people, and we need them soon. And, and whenever the economy goes up, we feel it first. Whenever it goes down, we feel first. Right. You know, and so, uh, uh, you know, we've been in that industry for a long time. And so uh, uh, th- th- there's, you know, there's a lot of desperation about not having people come in. And I think it's our piss-poor demographics. Yeah, That's so it I might think. be more, it might be a matter of survival now, not just a morality. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Well, maybe that's what it takes. But uh, I got uh, to stop. Yeah. yeah.